Hello again. In this video, we're going to continue talking about calcine elimination. This time, we're actually going to write the code for it. Uh, so, in the last video, we talked about how we can use this matrix form and go through the process of what is called Gaussian elimination, where we basically uh, do transformations to zero out the bottom left elements so that we have an upper right matrix, and that allows us to easily go through and solve these equations. And we spend a fair bit of time talking about accuracy and how that winds up making it so that Gaussian elimination is not necessarily our uh, optimal method for, for solving these things. Um, so we're going to wind up writing Gaussian elimination. We'll write a uh, file, Gauss elim, and I'm going to define our function here. It takes as inputs the array A. I'm actually going to prefer, or sorry, the matrix A. I'm going to prefer Scala notation, use a lowercase a for this. And then that vector y. Okay. And it's going to give us back the vector x, which is an array of doubles. Okay, so what happens inside of here? Well, we have a loop that needs to go through and basically decide what elements we are removing. So it, it's going to start here and it's basically going to say, okay, I want to take this element and set everything below it to zero. And then I want to take this element and set everything below it to zero. And uh, note, I don't have to take this element and set everything below it to zero because it's already at the bottom. So I'm going to go from zero until the length minus one. And that gives us a loop that looks like this. For i in zero until a dot length minus one. What do I have to do inside of this loop? Well, the first thing that I'm going to do, and we talked about this, for to help with numerical stability, I want to find the maximum valued row and swap it into this location. So max row equals, and I'm going to do this. I could, of course, write a loop for this, but I'm writing in Scala. So I'm going to use a fold operation, and in particular, I'm going to fold left. I'm going to start off with the value i. So this is, I'm using a range here. This is going to run through the values of i plus 1 to a dot length. And I start with the value i, so I'm saying i is the largest I've seen so far. And the function I want to pass this through, the first argument is the maximum we've seen so far. The second argument is the row we're looking at. And what do I want to do for this? Well, if a sub r sub i, and so that is the value that is in row r at column i. If that happens to be greater than, and, and note, wait, I need to remember to include an absolute value here, that is greater than a sub max sub i's absolute value, then I give back the value r, else I'm going to give back the biggest one I've seen so far. So after that, I have found my uh, largest row, and I want to swap it into place. So um, I could write swap code here. I'm going to wind up doing this twice. And just because it's kind of fun to do, I'm actually going to write a function, swap rows. I want to use it to swap the max row, to swap max row with i in A, and then I also need to do the same thing in Y. So how do we write this swap rows function? Def swap rows. Well, it needs to take the array. But what is it an array of? Well, it turns out that A and Y have different types. One is an array of array of doubles, and the other one is just an array of doubles. So I need to pass in a type parameter here. 
And so this will be an array of t. And we don't really care what t is because we're not doing anything with that. We're just swapping whole rows. I have row 1 is an int, and row 2 is an int. And inside of here, we have just a normal swap function. Val temp equals arr sub r1. Arr sub r1 equals arr sub r2. Arr sub r2 equals temp. OK. Now that I've swapped that into the top location, I need to go through and basically zero out all the values from there down. So I'm going to write another for loop here. And I'm going to have a j value that goes from i plus 1 until a dot length. Because, so for example, when i is 0, I am trying to, I'm looking at this 4, I'll wind up swapping the 8 up with the 4, but then I want to go further down in the matrix and turn all the others to zeros. I'm not turning this top one to zero, and hence j does not start at zero at, at i, it starts at i plus one. And what do we do inside of here? Well, it turns out that I'm going to be frequently using a value that we'll call the factor. And this is a sub j sub i divided by a sub i sub i. And so for example, uh, when I'm eliminating this value right here, I'm going to wind up uh, multiplying it by this uh, by this value. You know, by I'm going to take this row and I'm going to multiply each one of its factor, each one of its values by this value divided by that value, and then I'm going to subtract that off from each of these in turn. So that I don't have to repeat that division over and over again, I'm going to store it inside of a variable called factor. I'm also going to go ahead and, now that I know that factor, I can go ahead and set the a sub j sub i to 0. Uh, I don't have to look it back up because the information I needed from it is stored right there. And now we need another for loop that's going to run across the row hitting all of the additional elements. So for k in i plus 1 until a dot length, what are we going to do? Well, we set i sub or a sub j sub k and we subtract off from it a sub i sub k times factor. So remember the sub i is the index of the row or column that we are eliminating from this. Um, and just to make sure that this, we're going to do a sanity check. Okay? If I had done this for i, theoretically I should have gotten the 0 out. I just set it to 0 because this would wind up being subtracting two things that are very similar, and I might not get 0, I might get something really close to 0. But for a sanity check, we should say, okay, well what if k was i? Okay, so this is a sub j sub i, which is what we have up here. And what would I be subtracting from it? Well, this would be a sub i sub i times our factor. But our factor is a j i over a i i. The a i i here divided by a i i here would be 1. And that should give us a sub j sub i. And if we have a sub j sub i and we subtract from it a sub j sub i, we should get 0. Okay, so there's a nice sanity check that the math that we're doing here is, is what we want. Last thing that we do is we have to remember to also adjust our y values in the same type of way. So y sub j minus equals y sub j times, or this should probably be y sub j, yes. Uh, no, y sub j minus equals y sub i times factor. Um, Yes. Okay. Um, so this 
now goes through and does our Gaussian elimination. Okay, the, uh, at, when we're done with this, our A will be an upper triangular matrix and with all of the lower left values being set to zero. We will have explicitly set them to zero, but the math would get them extremely close to zero. And now we need to create the values that we're going to return. So I'm actually going to make a new array of double. It's of the appropriate length. And now I need another uh, for loop to run through and fill in the values of, of x. I would have been tempted to, instead of creating a new array, uh, would have been tempted to do something like a fill or a tabulate, except for the fact that I need this to fill in from the bottom up. As we saw, we wind up eliminating everything down to get a, a single equation, and then we have to run back up. By the way, I should note that while I was uh, testing out writing some, some code for this, I found that I totally messed up the math in this example. It remains as a student to uh, figure out the exercise, and this is also why we let computers do most of our math for us. Um, okay, so what goes inside of this loop? Well, I'm going to reuse my variable i, and it's going to go from a dot length minus 1 to 0 by minus 1. So we're going to count up from the bottom to the top, and we'll make sure that we give back our x at the end. Um, and then inside of here, x sub i starts off being equal to y sub i. Now if we're in this bottom one, it's there, and then all we wind up doing is saying x sub i divide equals a sub i sub i. Okay, so we would just take the minus 34 and divide by 9. Um, however, if we're on the row above this, we start off with this value, and then we need to subtract off 5 times the value that we found for x3, and then do the division. So in between setting this value and doing the division, I need to run through a for loop. And this for loop is going to go from i plus 1 until a dot length. And for each one of these, I'm going to take my x value at i, and I'm going to subtract from it a, I, uh, a sub i, a sub j, times x sub j. Okay, so that j is running out across, starting after i, and I take each value of the a matrix times the solution that I've already found for one of the other uh, x values, and I subtract that from what I had uh, over on the opposite side of the equation. Uh, you can see here why we have to make this loop run backwards, because otherwise these x values won't be filled in yet. And once we have finished that, we should have the proper x's. Um, we could demonstrate this. I um, happen to have the same equation that was here, this system of equations is how I know that I've really messed up the math on this, uh, stored as arrays in Scala, and then we can take this and it will print line out our x values. So Scala And those are the values that we got. Now, how do we know if those things are correct? Well, I can plug them back in, and we can undo. Okay. We can plug them back in to our original equation and see if we get the answers we want. So I want to do an inner product between each value of the a's and the values that are in this answer, and then add them all up. So I do this by using, I make a tuple here, I use zipped 
and I map over the product. So that will take the four times the first element of answer, or actually A has been transformed at, at, this, uh, at this point. Um, actually, you know, that's a very valid Okay. Um, this does the the products and gives me back a new array with all those products, and then I sum them up, and I want to see if that's actually equal to what my y values would have been. Uh, Z. What I had before was actually checking to see if the values matched what we had at the end of our Gaussian elimination. To be really careful, I'd like to make sure that it matches uh, what I had at the beginning, my original set of equations. And excellent. So 10, which is the, you know, which winds up being the four times this. 1.055 minus 2 times this value minus 2 times this value. Well, that gave us a 10. Uh, we got a 6. We wanted a 6. And we got a 3.0004 where we wanted a 3. And here we have perfect evidence that we're not getting exact answers. Uh, so, you know, this, because this is not. It's not integer arithmetic, and the real values we have do have rounding errors. You can see here explicitly that the answer we got was not 100% perfect, but it is accurate to many digits. So this ends our uh, discussion of Gaussian elimination. We'll come back in the next uh, video and we'll talk about how you can use um, the same types of linear equation solvers to do a least squares fit.